does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to be checking out Tricks and Treats, the card game from Nazca Game. This is for two to four players, ages eight and up. It'll take about 10 to 20 minutes to play. But before I do that, I want to thank one of our awesome Kickstarter backer sponsors who sent us to Gem Con. I want to thank Austin Gray, a guy I know personally, a super nice gay super nice guy, and he wants to pimp out Open Sign Productions and their web series Phobia. This is, these are short film clips that are uh, they're scary, they're fun, I like them an awful lot, I've watched all of them. Uh, they are Open Sign Productions on YouTube, I'll post the link down below. Check them out if you're into horror stuff, and I decided to do this on a trick-or-treat themed game, but they're great videos, uh, great people, check out the link down below. But, Tricks and Treats, the card game, in this game you just got a whole boatload of candy after trick-or-treating, and you're going to be trying to have the most candy in your pumpkin. But, you want to make sure that other people don't figure out which pumpkin is yours, because if they do, and if they call you out, then you are... <coughs> eliminated from the game. Sound intriguing? Let's open up and see how it works. Alright, and we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Tricks and Treats, the card game. First and foremost, we get our handy dandy rule sheet. It is one page, double sided, full color. It is a very, very well done rule sheet for a very simple game. It will have you up and running in no time at all. All. So, in this game, what are you going to be doing? You are going to be trying to get the most candy into your pumpkin. But, you have to be wary because if other people figure out which pumpkin is yours and are able to successfully call you out on your pumpkin, then you will be eliminated for the game. So this is a player elimination game. But, if they get it wrong, then they are eliminated from the game. And uh, if you eliminate other people from games, you will gain points. So. This is a two to four player game, and what's gonna have, you're gonna get inside the game is six pumpkin cards. If you're playing a two player game, then you only use four. If you're playing a three player game, you're only gonna use five. If you're playing a four player game, you're only gonna use six. So on and so forth. So you're gonna have as many pumpkins out there as you have players, plus two, if that makes sense. Next, you're gonna get these little tiny sheets of, uh, they look like post-it notes. And obviously, if you're playing a six player game, you're going to mix all these up, and each player is going to get one of these. They're going to look at it, show it to no one else, and this is going to reveal which pumpkin they are going to focus on to try and have the most candy at the end of the game because whoever has the most candy at the end of the game is going to be the winner. So, gameplay mechanics wise, this is a very, very simple game. Over here, you're going to have a big old pile of cards. And in these cards, you're going to have cards numbered 1 through 4 with various different kinds of candy on them. Also, as you can see right here, you're going to have the Time's Up card. And once the Time's Up card is revealed, the game is going to end immediately. Now, this is going to be played, this is going to be shuffled into the bottom five cards of the deck. So you know you're going to be getting close to the end of the game, but you never know exactly when it's going to be. So you can never really plan sometimes for what you want to do. Uh, so... Once you've gotten your secret number card and you're ready to start the game, each player is going to get two pieces of candy, and on their turn, you're going to draw one card, and then you're going to play one card underneath one of the pumpkins. Very, very simple. So we might say, all right, we got the one. We're just going to start off on the one, because nobody's going to call us out on the first turn, and then that would be our turn. So the next player, they would draw a card, and they would play a card, and they might play it over here and over here, and you're going to continue to do this until you get to the Time's Up card. Uh, also along the way, other people uh, are going to be able to guess it when someone is a certain number. So let's say one player has been just continually putting everything on two. And what you can do is you can say, all right, I think they might win the game, so I'm going to call them out. If you can successfully call them out, you're going to get their number card. And if you do that, then you will gain five points at the end of the game. And that person will be eliminated from the game. So even though they have a bunch of points here, they can't win the game. But if you get it wrong, you lose your point card and they gain five points. Once you get to the Time's Up card, you're going to add up whoever has the most points. And also these, if someone has successfully eliminated someone else. And then whoever has that many point, uh, the most points is going to be the winner of the game. Now that is the, the generic version of the game. It's a very, very simple, simplistic version of the game. However, where the game gets really spicy is when we get to these cards right here. Because you're going to add two of these cards to each game that you play once you know what you're doing. So let's say we play a two-player game, we'd have these four pumpkins out here, and then you're going to add two extra special mystery pumpkins. And these, uh, I think there's like 11 here, and they do drastically different things that are going to completely impact how you're going to play the game. So let's read one so you can get an example of one. This is the basket of good karma. At the end of the game, if there is an even number of cards in this basket, then all even-numbered baskets score 10 more candy. If there is an odd number of cards, then all odd 
bread basket score 10 more candy. So you're going to be, this is a big point swing right here. So you're constantly not only going to be playing to yours and to other people's to try and throw people off, but you're going to want to play to this so you can get those 10 additional bonus points. Let's look at another one. We got the favorites basket. What's this one? At the end of the game, you count the number of candy in each type in this basket. The candy type that has the most is considered everyone's favorite candy and counts as two for scoring. If there is a tie between two types of candy, then both types are considered the favorite. Uh, so essentially, you know, this is going to impact the scoring of the game. So if there's like a boatload of candy corn in here, then you can say, oh man, I really need to put candy corn into my pumpkin because it's going to be worth double the amount of points. We'll take a look at one more, but you do get an idea of exactly how much this is going to shake up the game. Right here we got the, Mon the Monty Basket. Each time a player puts two cards in this basket, that player may swap this basket with an adjacent basket. At the end of the game, swap the two baskets adjacent to this basket. So this one is going to completely change the game because cards are going to be get getting swapped around, which means the candy is also going to be getting swapped around, which means just crazy stuff is going to happen. And as you can see, there's tons of these different cards, and you're only going to be using two every time. So each game you play is going to be a little bit different. But that in a nutshell is how you play Tricks and Treats, the card game. Alrighty then, Tricks and Treats, the card game from Nazca Games. One of my final thoughts, let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, uh, the game's not going to be for everybody, it's two to four players, so if you got a bigger gaming group, it might not be for you. Also, there is definitely strategy here once you throw in the crazy different cards, uh, but it, it's just barely scratching the surface on strategy, but with a 10 to 20 minute game for ages 8 and up, you really can't be expecting too terribly much strategy, I don't think. Also, the gaming, oh, I hate to say this, but this game was a dud. It, it did not hit in my gaming group. I played with like seven or seven different people, and nobody else really liked the game that much, aside from me, which I'll get to in the pros. Um, and, and they had various different complaints. Some people thought it was boring. Some people thought some of the cards were just a little bit too complex, and they didn't know what was going on, and they thought some you know, counteracted each other, blah, blah, blah. Moving on to the pros, they're all wrong. I, I don't know. This is, this is weird for me. I review games because I love 85% of the games that I play. 85% of the games I really enjoy playing, and I just want to share my enthusiasm for the game. 10% I'm like, eh, and then 5% I hate. This falls into the 85% category. I busted this out. We played this game. Uh, once we used the Crazy Pumpkins variants, I was like, oh man, everybody's going to love this game. And nobody else liked it. And I was like, what the heck? I like this game a lot. I really do. I had a blast with it. There's a couple different reasons that I really enjoyed this game. First and foremost, I love how many different Crazy Pumpkins there are that will completely change every single game how you play the game. And I love that. There is a ton of replay value in this tiny little box just based on which pumpkins you choose. And one alternate variant that I would like to play with if I could find a group of people who actually enjoy the game is to have more of those crazy pumpkins. Maybe instead of having two, why not throw three on there and just shake things up even more. I also liked how simplistic the mechanics were. You draw a card and then you play a card and then your turn's over unless you want to try and guess which number someone is. Which brings me on to my favorite aspect of this game, though. I love the player elimination part. Now, I'm an odd duck who loves player elimination, and I love how Tricks and Treats handles it. Because on your turn, you're able to guess someone else's number. But it's a high-risk, high-reward thing. If you get it right, then that person is knocked out of the game. They're completely out of the game, and you gain five points at the end, which can be a huge point swing sometimes. But if you're wrong, you get knocked out of the game. And I really enjoy that mechanic in this game. I like it an awful lot, and I'll tell you why. Because you might be coming towards the tail end of the game, and you might be like, man, I don't think I'm going to win. I don't think, I think that maybe this guy has this number, or this guy might have this number, and I don't think I'm going to win this game. So you can just say, you know what, I'm going to throw caution to the wind, and I am going to just guess. I'm going to call somebody out and say, I think you're number five. And if you get it right, that person is out of the game which means they can't win the game, which means you're one step closer to potentially winning, plus you have five bonus points. I like that avenue a lot, but with the game ending randomly, you're never exactly sure when you should make that decision. You might be like, 
I don't know if I'm going to get another turn or not. And I like that an awful lot. Tricks and Treats the card game. I will be brutally honest and say that, that both game groups I played with, this was not a hit. However, I still highly recommend this game. I don't understand why it wasn't a hit. I like it an awful lot. It is a nice, fun, light, family weight game that has some awesome player elimination, some really cool special cards, crazy simple mechanics, and it's in a nice portable package. Tricks and Treats the card game. Ignore what everybody else in my game group says because this is Bowers Game Corner. And I really enjoy this game. I liked it an awful lot. That's from Nazca Games. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And also in the comments below, let me know what your favorite holiday-themed game is. Because I love the holidays and I want more holiday-themed games. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. That was the review for Tricks and Treats, the card game. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.